I never really imagined myself living the life that I live today. And that's not because of any lack of self-belief, but I guess it just wasn't in my initial master plan. I've always been a driven person and I've always wanted to succeed in all the things that I've done, but I didn't think it would take this direction. Training and being in the gym was just something I did for fun and always to improve my physique. I mean, what 20-something guy doesn't want to look better and feel more confident about their body? But a few years on, achieving so much as a physique competitor and competing at world championship level, building a name for myself via my social media as an athlete and a fitness icon, no way, I wouldn't have imagined that. Working for myself and being my own boss as a personal trainer and a high level strength coach and a stage coach and working with athletes and, and fitness competitors every day uh, is definitely not what I'd imagined. But I can't say I'm not pretty happy about it. Waking up on a Monday morning, it feels pretty different to how it did just a few years ago. Sunday nights, they're no longer filled with that kind of downbeat feeling that you get when you're not blessed with a job that you love. Even though I'm blessed to be a sponsored athlete and some of my income now comes from endorsements and, and duties, my main job is still that of a personal trainer and a strength coach. I work four days a week at an incredible gym in West London called Gym Box. And these days my client base has changed a little bit to how it used to be. I guess these clients look up to me, um, they want to achieve the kind of physique that maybe I have done and hence they choose me to be their coach. I still find personal training really, really rewarding as a job. Um, I don't really ever see myself not training people as part of my job. Each relationship and rapport is really different with each client. So I think uh, it's certainly something that I'd see myself doing for a few more years, no matter how busy I get with other fitness projects. I remember watching YouTube videos of uh, the WBFF and um, I'd not really heard of the Federation before, but watching shots of Rob Riches and um, David Kimmerley and some of the big sort of cover model stars all competing on stage and, and posing in front of like this massive crowd and that to me looked like the peak of what a competitor would do. It was a world championship level event and then I remember watching quite a few YouTube videos about it. And because I, th I was thinking to myself uh, about competing, Watching this YouTube stuff of WBFF, that was really like, wow. You know, if I could achieve that one day, that would be pretty incredible. Little did I know it, I think it was around about 12 months later, I was actually competing on the world stage for WBFF. I think everybody that uh, enters the fitness industry as a, as a personal trainer or an instructor or, or maybe even people that don't work within the fitness industry, everybody aspires to get a sponsorship deal. I was lucky enough to have a, um, a sponsorship agreement with a British company called Cymex Nutrition. Cymex was a company that I had actually genuinely used their products for the previous few years, so I was very familiar with um, the product line. So it was very easy to sit down and, and meet with the CEO, the managing director and the, the marketing manager about how um, a relationship between us might work. It's a real honour to be asked to be basically the main face, or one of the main faces of that brand. If you'd have said to me a couple of years before, guess what, you're going to be personal training in London in two years' time, again, I probably wouldn't have believed you. Mostly because I always thought that life in London would have just been a bit of a rat race, and um, I think I was quite comfortable in Cheltenham, big fish in a small pond. I really hated the idea of being a small fish in a really, really big pond. I guess it didn't take long before I turned things around pretty fast. Started working at Gymbox in Westfield. Westfield's this massive, massive super mall. It looks like a giant spaceship has just landed in the middle of Shepherd's Bush in West London. And it's basically a city in itself. And inside that city is a pretty dynamic and exciting gym. It's been a place where I've been able to settle pretty quickly and start working with an amazing array of clients and 
build a little network of friends and also do my own training there. It's certainly a great facility for me to um, um, keep on pushing my physique to the next level. So how did I get involved with Workout Empire? When you have a profile in the fitness industry and you have a stream of social media platforms, it's very easy for people to bombard you with sponsorship offers, endorsement requests, and um, I think that Workout Empire contacted me via email initially. But when I spoke to them, and uh, I ended up having a couple of Skype meetings with them, and actually flying out to Sweden, it's pretty evident pretty quickly that uh, these guys had an incredible vision for what they were going to do within the fitness industry. And I was really flattered to be offered the opportunity to be the main male athlete for this company. So having the affiliation with the WBFF, having the pro status, moving up to the category of muscle model, competing in Las Vegas three years in a row, all these things have really kind of driven me to to sort of treat my body as like a type of sculpture. I guess like Arnie would have said, you know, like just packing on little slabs of, of clay here and there, and trying to cut bits away, um, trying to make sure that every time I came to stage, I, I presented a different physique or an improved physique, or was trying to work on my condition. Being a physique competitor and, and achieving this pro status, as it's called, um, it really, really focuses your mind on your physique. I mean, if I wasn't obsessed with my physique um, before I was a personal trainer, um, getting onto stage and, and being competitive, that certainly brings on the next level, really does. So regardless of what the future holds, one thing I know for sure is that it's always gonna be really important for me to be passionate about what I do. I think it's just about having a little bit of self-confidence and being willing to take risks. One of the things I've got tattooed on my back is one of my favorite sayings. It's written in Latin, it's al dentes fortuna urat. And when translated, it means fortune favors the bold. To me, that's a really important saying. It just reminds me to take opportunities, seize the day, to be confident. Life's not gonna give you what you want. If, if you don't ask, you don't get.